So I want to open with a bunch of anniversaries this weekend. First, it was my 28th wedding anniversary yesterday. I'll tell my wife you clap for her that she can put up with me that long. <laughs> the only reason I remember it was my 28th wedding anniversary is because five years ago this weekend, I got ordained a deacon and celebrated my first mass there, or participated in my first mass there. I don't get to celebrate it. Um, although it was a celebration for me here in this parish. And more importantly, six years ago today, Father Mike was ordained a deacon. So as you may not know, every priest, every bishop is a deacon before they're a priest or a bishop. They might like to forget that period, but I don't. Um, and uh, there was one other thing. Oh, um, it's still Easter. So, happy Easter. Yes. That's what I thought. Of. A little better than the five o'clock mass. How many of you are Bruins fans? It's got to be somebody here, right? Okay. And so they just swept the Carolina Hurricanes. We're waiting for tomorrow for the next series to start, right? And so if you watch Game Four, Carolina Hurricanes down three games to zero. The team comes out and the fans are going crazy. They're down three games. It's an elimination game, and they're going nuts to win one game in Carolina, and they lost. And did you watch the Carolina fans at the end of the game? They were still going crazy, waving the towels and all that. It's Easter, folks. We're an Easter people. We conquer death. We get access to everlasting life. So let's try that again. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We should be at least as excited as those Carolina Hurricane fans. They lost. We're on the winning team. So the other reason you would know it's Easter, the candle is still lit behind me. And... We get readings from the New Testament, so both readings, New Testament. We hear from the Acts of the Apostles, what the guys did after Jesus died and rose from the dead and was still among them. And then we get readings from Revelation. And Revelation is of great interest to me because it was one of the first books in Scripture that I studied a little bit because my brother came to me many, many years ago and said, I know who the Antichrist is, the number of the beast. And I'm like, he's crazy. So I did a little bit of study and, of course, he was wrong. And Revelation is one of the books that we like to look at to try and understand the end of the world. When's it going to happen? Can we get ahead of things? Can we figure it out? And so it started me thinking about all this worry we have and trying to learn things about from Revelation, the things that we have no control over. And we see the same example today in Acts of the Apostles. What are they doing? They forgot it's Easter too, just like we did. So human behavior hasn't changed much over time. They're fighting over whether... Um, Gentiles need to become Jewish first in order to become Christians or Catholics at the time. Do we have any Jews that have converted to Catholicism here? None, right? So we're all a bunch of Gentiles. I was going to make this a homily about circumcision, and I decided against it. But that's what they were talking about, right? Circumcision was you had to become Jewish first in order to become Catholic. And so they ultimately decided against it. So I thought about my week as I thought about these readings, knowing I had to preach this week. And so I was flying out to Reno for work. My factory is in south of Reno, Nevada. And, of course, I'm worried about it's my first presentation in front of the new owners, in front of a customer in our factory. So I'm worried about how that's going to go. I'm worried about how I'm going to be perceived by the new owners in doing this presentation in front of a customer. And then as we're flying out, we get to Orlando, heading to Phoenix with a connection to Reno. And of course, there's a delay in Orlando because of some barking dog on the plane. So now I'm anxious about are we going to make our connection? Are we going to get into Reno on time? We're supposed to get in at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. So I'm worried about that. I'm worried about my two adult children. Will I have a home left when I get back home because i got two adult children living and taking care of the house for the week. And then as I'm flying back on Friday, I'm worried about the homily. Am I going to have a homily for Saturday? And to make it even worse, as I go to bed Thursday night, we have a 6 a.m. flight Friday morning. I'm worried we're going to get up on time. And so we set the alarms for 4.30. We call for a wake-up call. And I can't sleep because I know we have to get up for the airport. And so I look at my tablet. I see 4.30 on the tablet. No wake-up call. I wake my wife up. We have to get up. We have to get ready. We get up, pack all our things. We get ready. It's about 5 o'clock. I check my phone to see what the flight status is to make sure we're not delayed before we head to the airport. And it says your flight leaves in five hours. And in five hours, that's really strange. It's a six o'clock flight. It's five o'clock. I look at the clock in the room. 
The tablet doesn't adjust the time. It's still three hours ahead. We got up at one third, and we're ready for the airport. Back to bed we go. A little too much anxiety in my life, maybe, right? So, um, but of course, we made it back home. So all of that anxiety, all about things I can't do anything about. And what does Jesus say in the Gospel today? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. You know how many times he says that in Scripture? I counted once. 20, over 20 times in Scripture, he says to us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I didn't exhibit Christ's peace in any of what I just described to you all week long. Nothing but anxiety. That peace that we pray for in the world, never going to happen. Great to pray for, we should all work toward it. But I'm contributing to the lack of peace in the world because I don't have Christ's peace inside me. I've got all this anxiety about things I can't control. If I had Jesus' peace inside me, I wouldn't be worried about any of those things. They're all outside of my control and all in God's hands anyways. In the book of, in the reading from Revelation today, it talks about heaven, the vision that John has, and that there is no need of a sun or a moon because God is all the light we need. If we have that peace inside us, we will be that light in this world that needs us. So this week, when you find yourself getting angry, frustrated, anxious about something, I know I'm going to try. Focus on that Christ peace inside you that he offers to us. Father Michael, say those words at the Mass. We don't realize how much of Scripture is in our Mass. Right before the sign of peace, he says the same words from today's reading. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Take those words to heart this week and try to be that Christ's peace in the world and bring God's light to people that you see.